Hey, welcome to the slideshow for exercise six, straight and level flight. So flying straight and level is an essential skill and believe it or not, it's not as easy as it seems. So we're gonna go through how you go about doing just that. In my last slideshow, we reviewed attitudes and movements from exercise five. Uh, so we're just gonna be building on those concepts and you can see that uh, that slideshow, if you haven't already seen it, you can go back and review it. And we're going to be keeping the cruise attitude as a focal point and a kind of baseline around which we're going to build some advanced learning. And for, again, a review of what the cruise attitude is, you can go and see the slideshow for exercise five. But in case you need a quick refresher, this is what it looks like. So that is your cruise attitude visually. That's your reference point for which we'll be building on this for a straight and level flight. Or maybe more like this. So straight level flight is defined as holding a steady direction with the wings laterally level while maintaining a constant altitude. In order to make this easier visually, what I'm going to tell you to do in the first lesson is to pick a point way off in the distance, a visual point, and just fly towards it. Believe it or not, this is the easiest way to maintain straight and level flight. As you fly towards that point, the space around the point is gonna move in relation to that point. However, the point itself should remain in the same spot in your windscreen as you fly towards it. We also call this point the point of zero movement as it appears to be stationary while the other points in space move away from it. As far as instruments go, you'll notice a few things uh, that'll tell you you're in straight and level flight. So heading, altitude, and compass indication should all be constant. And as long as you don't make changes to your power setting, your airspeed is also going to be constant. Common reasons for not being able to maintain straight and level flight are that probably your aiming point, your visual aiming point is a bit off. So it might be too high, too low, or just not centered in the right spot. And that's okay because it takes a little while before you're able to really pick it out. Very, very common for someone who's just starting to not really be able to find that point. The more you look for it, the easier it is gonna, uh, it's gonna be to see it. Turbulence, wind can also have an effect on uh, maintaining straight and level, but not really that much. Another common reason for not being able to maintain straight level flight is over controlling or not trimming. So what's trim? The trim wheel is your best friend, or at least it's going to be your best friend. If you learn how to use it properly early on, it's going to do most of the work for you. I'm probably going to be on you all day long to make sure that you're trimmed out, which basically means is your trim set to where you want it? If you haven't set your trim properly, you're gonna be fighting the aircraft, distracted and unable to divide your concentration between what it is that you're trying to do. Always set the power and the attitude first, then trim. Do not try to fly the aircraft by moving the trim wheel. Always move the yoke to where you want the aircraft to fly. Feel the pressure in the yoke and then trim to relieve that pressure. Now that you know how to fly straight and level, let's talk about flying straight and level at various airspeeds. Due to force coupling, when power is added in straight and level flight, two things are gonna happen. First, the nose is gonna lift, and also the aircraft is gonna wanna yaw to the left. To counter these forces, you'll wanna learn early that uh, if you wanna fly straight and level, but at a higher airspeed or higher power setting, you're going to have to simultaneously counteract these forces by pushing forward on the yoke and applying a slight right rudder while you add power. The opposite is also true. When you decrease power from straight and level flight, the aircraft will nose down and it's going to have a slight yaw to the right. So if you wanna fly straight and level, but at a lower power setting and a lower airspeed, you're gonna to need to pull back on the yoke while you decrease power and control for yaw. All this talk about airspeed and power leads us to a very important realization, which is that attitude plus power equals performance. 
What that means is that neither your pitch nor your power setting can control either your airspeed or your altitude independently. Airspeed relies both on pitch and power, as does changes in altitude. Changes in pitch and power must also be made in coordination with each other in order to obtain the desired performance of the airplane. So again, just a quick review from straight and level flight. If you want to increase airspeed, first thing you're going to do is going to increase power. Nose is going to want to lift, so you're going to push forward at the same time, and it's going to want to yaw to the left, so you're going to give it a bit of right rudder. Your ailerons aren't really going to do anything in this situation. And again, when you're reducing your airspeed, so what you're going to do is you're flying around straight and level, you're going to bring the power back, the nose is going to want to drop, so you're going to need to apply back pressure on the control, and it's also going to want to yaw to the right, so control is required. It's not going to be as intense of a yaw as when you add power, and you'll see this when you go for your flight. Once you've got your power set to the power setting that you want it to be, and you've got your attitude set to what you want it to be, only at the very last step do you use the trim tab in order to maintain whatever performance you're trying to get out of your airplane. Safety considerations to remember, as I covered in the last slide, are the lookout. So always keep the scan going for other traffic and transfer of control, which is the standard you have control in which case you respond, I have control. And when I'm taking back control, I'll say, I have control, you give it to me, and then you respond with, you have control. Congratulations, you made it through the slideshow. Here are some review questions that you can go over. And just remember, if you do have any questions before your flight, write them down, bring them, and ask them before the flight so that we can cover them before we get up in the air.